Good evening. I'd like to welcome you to the first annual Encorium Healthcare Symposium. Tonight's focus will be on the impact, prevention, and response to pandemic avian flu, a discussion with the experts. I believe that we have a very interesting program planned tonight. We have brought together world-recognized authorities on influenza, the delivery of healthcare services, and the media to address issues that are highly relevant to the issue to pandemic avian flu, preparedness for, and response uh, to this potential crisis. I hope that you will find the symposium to be stimulating, informative, and perhaps somewhat controversial. As all of you know, healthcare crises can have many different ideologies. Some result from demonstrations of the power and fury of Mother Nature. Anyone have any idea what this is? I'll give you a hint. It's August 2005. Okay? This is looking from the, the shore side, just outside of New Orleans, as Katrina came on shore. This is Hurricane Katrina literally making landfall. All right, now, as all of you know, amongst other things, people ended up floating down Canal Street. Sounds somewhat appropriate, I guess, on one, one level. But this is a, a young man who found a large styrofoam block and was literally using it as a canoe to go down uh, Canal Street in New Orleans. All right, now, last um, uh, August, August the 25th, 2006, there was this article that appeared in Health Day, which is a, uh, a physician-related news journal. And the title was, New Orleans Healthcare System Still in Tatters. A year after Katrina, city and region lacks doctors, facilities, experts say. And then down the bottom, the effect is halting. The region's biggest city continues to suffer from a dire shortage of healthcare professionals and hospital beds and the few hospitals that have stayed open are hemorrhaging money. Hits to the healthcare system are serious problems in our country. The lack of, of appropriate public health infrastructure has been a recurring problem, and it's a problem that continues moving forward. Um, there we go. Okay. On this curve, on this graph, what we see is United States life expectancy. On the y-axis is age. Along the x-axis are years going from 1900 to the year 2000. As you look at this, the, the, uh, the yellow line is for women, the red line is for men. As you look at this, you can see that over this 80-year period, the average lifespan, the life expectancy, for men and women in the United States increased and increased in a relatively linear manner. Now, these lines represent World War II, Korea, the Korean War, the Vietnam War. Up here is HIV. And as you look at this, you can see that none of these major events, these major events associated with, with all kinds of, of healthcare associated uh, challenges, none of them significantly impacted on life expectancy in the United States. In contrast to that, when you look at 1900 to 1920, what you see is a relationship, this is pretty much linear, except for this major change, and this in fact represents 1918, 1919, the Spanish flu. Okay, so the Spanish flu is now thought to have, in fact, been an avian flu. Okay, and look at the impact that it had on U.S. survival, U.S. Um, uh, life expectancy. Right, so this is this is not a a minor issue. This is not a minor challenge as we think about the the potential problems associated with pandemic avian flu. This is a quote that uh, came from a, a book called America's Forgotten Pandemic, and it was published in uh, 1989. And 
um, it's about the influence of the 1918 Spanish uh, flu epidemic or pandemic. And what it, the quote is, the influenza pandemic of 1918-1919 killed more humans than any other disease in a period of similar duration in the history of the world. Okay, that's a pretty powerful statement. Okay. What we're doing today is we've gathered to go and look at, at the potential of a pandemic avian flu moving forward, going into the, the, uh, the next few years. As we look backwards, there are a number of, of lessons from recent healthcare crises that I think are important and that we're using as the basis for the discussion this evening. Let's start off with people. Well, obviously, um, in the pandemic flu of 1918-1919, almost a million people potentially um, uh, died over the course of, of those two years throughout the world. So there's a tremendous uh, degree of hardship and suffering that, in fact, is associated with people. And Dr. Rick Bright, um, who's sitting over here, Dr. Rick Bright is going to talk to us about the potential scope of the healthcare problem associated with pandemic avian flu to give you some kind of a perspective. And Rick is one of the top people in the world in H5N1. And he's going to give some kind of a perspective, a, a viewpoint on whether or not there is any reason to have concern about a potential pandemic flu epidemic. Now, in association with people, there obviously has to be the provision of, um, of health care. So the public health infrastructure and planning and preparedness are very, very critical components to whatever a response would be for a pandemic flu. And in fact, Dr. Frank Peacock, who is the Director of Emergency Services at the Cleveland Clinic, is going to talk about the lessons learned from the recent pandemic flu drill conducted at the Cleveland Clinic. And uh, I think that this is going to be very, very interesting. Frank is a, an excellent speaker. He's got some great videos. And uh, I think it will be worthwhile. Now, we've talked about people, public health infrastructure, planning, preparedness. The information has to be given to the people. To, the information has to get out through the media. And so the media is very, very important relative to the public perception of what happens, as well as the potential avoidance of panic if, in fact, there should be a, a pandemic avian flu. And Dr. Christine Dumas, who is a, uh, a nationally uh, known medical reporter for NBC News and for the Fox News Channel, is going to speak about the critical role of the media in saving lives in the event of pandemic avian flu.